HKM TV Sports presents Hopkinton High School Boys Basketball, where tonight it's game two of a doubleheader with the Hillers versus the Westwood Wolverines. Hi, everybody. Mike Prade here with Tom Nappy. We're going to bring you the action here on a Wednesday afternoon. And, Tom, it's quite simple for this Hiller team. It is win and you're in, and if you don't, you are done for the season. Right. It all comes down to this game, and it's been a kind of an up-and-down type of season for the Hillers. But it all comes down to this, and this is going to be a tough battle. Westwood fighting for the TVL title today. Right. Uh, the Hillers with a 9-10 and 10 record, trying to even that record. While Westwood, as Tom just mentioned, is in a situation where if they win, they control their own destiny to win the TVL, and it's important to them. If they should lose and Medfield loses, I think there's some sort of machinations for a tie. If they should lose and Medfield wins, then Medfield wins the TVL. It's the way I heard it from Eric Cargill. So really an important game for both squads tonight, and we are going to turn over the broadcast to the public address announcement. We'll be back in a second. Warnings will not be issued. Offenders will be ejected. Please respect all decisions made by officials. Please respect fans, coaches, participants, and opponents alike. And now the lineups for tonight's game for the Westwood Wolverines. Guard number three, junior Tim Giovino. Guard number 13, sophomore Reed Wilson. Center, number 12, junior, Chuck Bemis. Forward, number 14, junior, Aiden Fitzgibbons. And forward, number 24, junior, Dylan Linehan. Coaches for Westwood, Steve St. Martin, Dave Lybrock, and Ryan Douglas. And now for your hometown, Hopkinton Hillers. Forward, number 30, junior, Jimmy Adams. Forward, number 15, senior, Jack Ficari. At guard, number 14, senior, Connor Zarapusco. At guard, number 23, senior, Captain Cooper Corby. And forward, number 34, senior captain, Nick Canal. Managers for the team, Drew Mogler, Julia Kraft, Caroline Coffey. Coaches for the Hopkinton Hillers, Tom Keene and Chris Banks. And would you all please rise for our national anthem. What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. All right, the national anthem here at the Athletic Center as we get set for Wednesday night basketball between the Hillers and the Westwood Wolverines. And Tom and I were just talking before we went to the public address announcer, which, uh, w and that was the importance for this game for both squads, uh, Tom. Um, the Wolverines come in at a 15 and 6 clip, and they are 14 and 2 in the TVL. And as we said, 
in the opening. The Hillers must win in order to stay alive in the tournament. The Hillers come off a pretty one-sided victory against the Norton Lancers uh, on Monday, and that's how they got themselves in a position to at least keep their season going. Yeah, the Hillers, they've had an up-and-down season, but they've beaten some good opponents, and tonight they're going to have to beat a really good opponent. Westwood, they've only lost a couple times this season. Their last loss was the Bishop Fee, which is just a powerhouse. Yeah, the Hillers won the toss. Here's a three-point by uh, Zarabusco, rolls in. So the Hillers jump out to a 3 nothing lead. If you get Connor hot, he's tough from out on the arc. Now here's the Wolverines. They're going from our right to left as we're in the perch over the athletic center. The interesting thing is a mid-level jumper that's rebounded by Zarapusco. The uh, Wolverines start an all-underclass backfield. They actually only have three seniors on their roster. And there's a turnover. And so Hopkinton... That just shows you they're going to be dangerous for the next couple of years to come. Yeah, you're, you're right. And here's Tim Giovino goes to the side. And there, Reed Wilson. There's a three ball by Giovino. Rims long, but it's taken away. And here comes Vakari. Vakari ahead of the field. Pulls up, slides, but he's going to get called for a travel. And Hillers turn it over. Three referee system, as was the case in the last game for Hopkinton, with Hopkinton, the referees getting into tournament condition by having three officials on the field, on the court. And now, Aiden Fitzgibbon now looking to drive pull up jumper is good. Tom, one of the things about this Wolverine team, they're a very great shooting team. They really are a really good, smooth team from the field. Yeah, they have a lot of good offensive players and a lot of good defensive players, as you see the steal there. Linehan stole it, and he gives it up, and in the bucket was Charlie Bemis makes it the junior. Bakari wasn't careful with the ball, and he lost it. Here's Zarapusco now. He gives it to Corby. Corby to Jimmy Adams. It's Adams, Canal, Zarapusco, Bakari, and Corby for the Hillers. Here's Canal driving to the bucket. He makes it. He's going to get called for an offensive foul. Had a little push off there. Nick Canal, first team TBL All-Stars named this week. And, uh, he had been averaging around 14 points a game or so. And there's Linehan now, one of the better players spinning. Shot goes inside and he hits Bemis who makes the shot. 6-3 is the score. Corby pushes the ball up court. Vakari has a post on the breaks. Goes cross court to Zarapusco. Zarapusco to Adams. Adams spins, puts up a shot. It's blocked, and it's rebounded by Adams. He gets it back, and now he goes back out top. And here's Vakari looking to drive. He tries to throw it to Canal. It goes through his hands, and it's intercepted by the Wolverines. They race up court. Here's Linehan again. He drives, puts up a shot. It's no good, but he is fouled. This Westwood team, they're aggressive. They'll rush the low post all game long and drop those fouls. And, and Dylan Linehan, the junior, will at, go to the free throw line to try to extend the lead. We've just started quarter number one with five minutes and 38 seconds to go. And Linehan misses the first, the left-handed shooting forward. Linehan's a second-team TVL All-Star. Yeah, they had a couple on their squad. I think uh, Tim, Gio, uh, Tim Giovino is the other one. He's on the first team. Linehan makes the, uh, misses the second. And it's rebounded by Austin Odell, who's checked in the game. Also in for the Hill is Zach Zizitsky. He's got the ball now. Looking to drive now. He calls out a play and gives it to Corby. Corby yells out a play now. And it goes to Odell. Zarapusko holds over his head. Zizitsky looking to drive. Puts up a foul line jumper. It's long, but he gets his own rebound, gets it back. He drives, pump fakes, puts it up off glass. No good. Rebound loose. That's taken away by Linehan. Linehan races. Puts up a shot off glass. No good. Rebounded, though, and put back by Charlie Bemis. If you're the Hillers, you're going to need to take advantage of those rebound opportunities you get in your offensive zone. There's a three ball. It's long. Rebounded by Odell. There's a nice offensive rebound. 
There's a drive, scoop shot, no good. Rebound loose on the floor, taken away by Odell, and he is fouled. And we are not sure who is the foul is on because the scoring clock is not putting up the fouls. Canal checks back in, gives it to Odell. Inside of Canal, puts up a floater, it's good, and it counts. He got into the middle of the circle, Tom, in the middle of the lane, and just threw up a right hander, and it dropped in. That's the advantage you have if you're the Hillers. You have those three tall guys in Canal, Odell, and Sasitsky that could just get in the lane and throw it up there and usually draw a foul. You know, six foot five trying to complete a three point play is short, and a bugaboo early start for Hopkins in there. One of their areas they've had issues with this year is their free throw shooting. And it comes back to haunt them on occasion. Here's a drive towards the bucket is good. And again, it's uh, Charles Bemis, the junior. And it's steal by Westwood, careless with the ball with the Hillers. Giovino, though, he throws it away, and so it'll be Hiller ball. Good start for Charles Bemis, four field goals already tonight. And the inbound to Corby. He's being pressured by Giovino. Goes behind his back, nice move. Cross court, but he throws it away. The other turnovers so far have been a problem. They trail 10-5, and there's a timeout on the court. And we assume it is on the Hillers with 4-10 to go in the first quarter. It's been a good uh, up and down the floor battle. The Hillers doing a nice job rebounding in the low post, but they just got to get the shooting going from the low post. They missed a couple opportunities there to get within uh, a couple more points of Westwood. And you can't miss too many opportunities against a great team like this. And the Hillers are at nine and eight on, on the season in the TVL. We mentioned in the opening that the Wolverines are 14 and two. They're coached by Steve St. Martin in his sixth year. And he has accumulated a record of 86 and 43 over those six years. He's always had a pretty good squad, Tom. They, they're always in contention and they give Hopkinton fits over the years I've been covering Hiller basketball. Yeah, it's just a consistently good program in really just about every sport. Uh, Westwood's just a strong athletic school. Uh, it's always good rivalry, though, when these two teams meet up. Well, with their 15-6 and six record, the Wolverines, they're 14-2 and two in the TVL, so they lost most of their contests. Uh, you know, against non-TVL opponents. In fact, Tom mentioned in the beginning they lost to Bishop Fian 74 to 43. That's a big, big win for Bishop Fian in the tournament, I think, the Wolverines were in. Bishop Fian, they're on another planet this year in basketball. There's uh, a bucket by Tom Rich who checked in for Westwood. Zitke's open. Inside it goes to Odell. And there's Zizitsky open for three. The left-hander buries a three-pointer. And Hillers trail by four. Coach St. Martin was not happy about that. He saw Zizitsky wide open, just waiting in the corner. In fact, he was open twice there. Well, Tom Rich now with it. Ian O'Brien drives for, and he gives it up to one of those new players Tom mentioned checked in. We don't have a 40 on our list, so sorry about that. It's uh, Owen Gaffney. He has a three ball, and it's hit by Ian O'Brien. And Zizitsky loses the handle now. Zarapusko to Corby, down low to Canal. Canal drives, puts it up off glass, no good. It's taken away by Zizitsky, who drives. He puts up a reverse. He is blocked, but Odell spins. Now he is fouled. And he looks like he was fouled by Don Levante Higginbottom, the senior, one of the captains, or I think the only captain on the squad here for the Wolverines. Anderson and Higginbottom were right in front of Odell. It was a good move, just being able to force your way to the basket and at least get the shot up and draw the foul. All right, Odell at the free throw line, takes the first one and drops it through. Hits a line drive, goes through. Adams and Nick Stanley check in for the Hillers. Odell second, 
is rimmed long, but it's rebounded oh, into the hands of Higginbottom. And up court come the Wolverines. There's almost a steal there by Jimmy Adams. Now here's a fake three, driving towards the bucket goes O'Brien, puts it up and good as he falls. Stanley now pushes the ball up court and he gets it up court, drives, pulls up, now goes outside to Zizitsky. And it's long, but it's rebounded inside to Odell. He is fouled from behind. And the foul, I think, is against Nick Anderson. And it is the fourth team foul for the Wolverines. As Odell will go to the line to shoot a pair. And he makes the first. Got an odd looking free throw. <laughs> Certainly does. As long as it works, though. Kind of just hucks it right at the back of the rim. Austin, the 6 6 junior, makes the second. So he drops in a couple of Hillers' trail by six with 2.11 to go in the first quarter. Adams playing out front. And there's a pass that's thrown, almost thrown into the backcourt. But saved by Rich. Rich drives, puts up a shot. It's blocked. It's into the hands of Anderson. Anderson is loose on the floor, taken away by Stanley. Great steal. Stanley looking to drive. Now he pulls it back up top to Odell. Across court it goes. There's Adams. Stanley inside the canal. Canal to the baseline. Throws it up, misses, and it's rebounded by Ian O'Brien, the senior. One of the three seniors. Here's another one. Devontae Higginbottom now throws, and it's a travel against Westwood. That's what the Hillers are going to have to do defensively is get right in the face of this Westwood offense. Don't let them get those shots off. They're hitting from all over the floor right now. Now they average 58 points a game, Tom, so you've got to stay on them defensively, and you can't give them a lot of second chances. Hillers are averaging just 51 points a game. Inside to Canal, he's triple teamed. He's fouled, but he gets it back off glass and he makes it. And Hillers down by four. Adams almost takes the ball away there. And Higginbottom drives, he skips a little bit. Now a three ball by Ian O'Brien, rims in and out, but it's loose. It's taken away by Rich, but he's out of bounds as he tried to save it. Into the ball game now for the Hillers comes Kyle Rector, the 6'10 junior. And Odell will take a break. Tall and guys are going to get a lot of playing time in this one. There's a drive to the bucket by Canal. Avoids traffic and makes a bucket. And he goes down by two. Well, if the, as you said, Tom, the big guys, if they can stay under control and make the shots inside, this Westwood team... It's not as tall as Hopkinton. Here's a shot from outside, rebound loose, and it's taken away by Canal, but it goes through his hands, and now Rector cleans it up cross court to Stanley. Stanley pulls it back, goes up top, and there's a three ball by Zarapusco. It rims long, but it's rebounded by Stanley. And he gets it to Canal. Canal goes inside to Rector, and Higginbottoms knocks it out of bounds. Last touch by the Wolverines. The Wolverines, they might have a little bit more of speed than Hopkinton, but the Hillers certainly have a big height advantage in this one, and they got to take advantage of that. Yeah, it's, it's pretty big. Here's inside the Canale makes an easy shot. Well, it's obvious there as the buzzer sounds, and the score ends up being tied after one, 17-0. And it is obvious, Tom, you get the ball inside to these Hiller big mans, and they can make that shot. There's no stopping them in there. And I think they discovered that about midway through the first quarter. Early on, they were uh, struggling to get in on the interior, but then they were more aggressive about it and started giving their big men those open looks, and that's why this game's tied right now, and I think they're going to keep, uh, keep going that avenue as long as it continues to work. And right now, it seems to be uh, working to perfection against this Westwood team. They really slowed them down at the end of that first quarter. Well, the Hiller cheerleaders were just on your screen there as you're looking at the student body. I shouldn't say student body, right? Because there's probably some parents in there. 
Why don't we uh, take a look at the scoring totals for the first quarter? Go ahead, Tom. We got Connor Sarapusco with the lone three-point bucket. Austin O'Dell hit three um, free throws. And you got Nick Canal with four two-point field goals for eight points. And Zach Sasitsky with three. And then for Westwood, Tom Rich, two. Charles Bemis, eight. Aiden Fitzgibbons, two. Ian O'Brien, five. All right, Westwood will now have the ball as we start the second quarter. It was on a little bit of a mini run there. Oh, nice uh, intercepted pass. Canal has to keep the dribble. He wants to give it up to a guard, and he does finally. And Stanley now controls things. Cross court to Adams. Back to Zarabusco. Connor looking to drive. Puts it up top to Canal. Inside it goes, but it's taken away by Linehan. Linehan gives it up. Here's Giovino, puts on the brakes now. Giovino to Junior. Put a good ball handler there. Reed Wilson being guarded by Zarapusco. Inside it goes. Turnaround jumper by Bemis is blocked. And there's a three ball low. It's answered back by Wilson, the sophomore. That's an amazing thing with this Westwood team. They don't start a senior. And they're going to steal another ball here. And they're going to race up court. They got a three on none. Inside pass, it goes to Bemis, who puts it up and in so quickly. Four points. Here's Canal driving, puts on the brakes, goes to the basket, puts up a shot, and it's good. Well, back and forth we go. Not a, no time for a break there, Tom. 22-19's a score. And here's a drive by Wilson, puts an easy bucket in. It's not going to be too happy. And Hillers, if they let that happen. As Stanley puts on the brakes to Adams up top. Now Zarapusco looking inside. Looks like Linehan is trying to front Canal down low. And now Rector with it. Goes inside to Canal. Nice pass. Good put, put up and in. And Nick Canal is going to have a night tonight if they can't stop that. I he think he has so. one, right? Yeah, he has 12 points already. We're, in, we're two minutes into the second quarter here. Keep sending them right out in front of that baseline. It's working. Until they stop you, you keep giving it to them too, right? Absolutely. And here's a pull-up jumper by Fitzgibbon who makes it. You will see we were talking in the beginning too. This Westwood team makes mid-level jumpers. Zarapusco now dribbling. He's being pressured by Wilson and he tips it. Now Canal can't grab it. And good hands by Reed Wilson. Stop the plays. Linehan drives and it's blocked. It's tipped back up and in. Rector now comes down when he is fouled as he tried to come down with the ball. And his arm was grabbed. There's no reason at all why you should lose the rebound battle tonight. That's for sure. And it's also, I guess one of the referees explaining to Coach St. Martin what happened there. And the Wolverines are pressing full court here, semi-pressing, I should say, but Corby breaks it, goes behind his back, loses the handle for a moment, and he throws it to Zarabusco and almost throws it away. Zarabusco rescues it, though, and Corby now will call out a play from the top of the arc. Zarabusco looking to go inside. Rector has it up hot, down, down low to Odell. It, it's a three-ball attempt. Now it's pulled back. Adams, floater, off the rim, no good, and it's rebounded by Aiden Fitzgibbon. Linehan gives it up. Now Reed Wilson. Now Bemis turn around with Rector all over. Boy, Rector fell asleep there. And he's lucky the Hillers missed a chance there to get an easy rebound, but the Wolverines throw it out of bounds. 4.45 to go in the, sec in the first half. Zarapusco drives, puts up a right-hander. It's no good, but he's fouled. Good job by Zarapusco, just running right down the lane and drew something up there. And notice how Nick Canal came off for a little while for a breather, and he has to be tired. It's been all about Nick Canal in this game, feeding him the ball in the low post. Zarapusco yeah, now at the free throw line, and he makes the first. Connor, one of the... Stronger free throw shooters for this Hiller squad. Wolverines lead by four. 
You get Westwood in early foul trouble here. They already got six fouls in the half. And they just jinxed him, I guess. He just missed it. Broadcasters jinx. Yeah. They down low to Bemis. Bemis throws cross court. Now drive towards the bucket. And Linehan drives, and he is fouled. Nice use of the body by Linehan. And went up for the hook shot there, drew the contact. Well done. And he will go to the free throw line to shoot a pair. And the Wolverines going to bring in four at the buzzer here for new players. And Linehan makes it. Everybody is subbed in but Linehan, who's at the free throw line. Wolverines with a five point lead. And he makes a second left hander, drops both through. And now Linehan will go to the bench. And Zizitsky now bringing it up with pressure. Double team on top. Good pick by Odell. Zizitsky dribbling. Now goes to inside to Odell. Odell puts it up off glass and in. Westwood had the 2-3 zone going there to try to avoid the Hillers getting the ball in the low post. Didn't quite work there. Higginbottom puts the ball on the floor. Now throws back up top. He gets it back, though, and he drives the baseline, but he's guarded nicely by Odell. Nice pass inside to Anderson. And he gets called for steps before the bucket. And Jimmy Adams is going to check in for Canal. And the press is on for the Wolverines. Corby brings it up. He's double team now at the top. And he'll just try to work some play out here. Corby to Zizitsky. Now back up to Fakari is checked in. Inside it goes to Odell, who has the handle. It's going to be a tie-up, and it will be Hiller Ball as they retain possession. Inbounds it comes. Corby now, 10 seconds on the shot clock. It's a three ball by Zizitsky. Rims long, but it's taken by Fakari. Fakari tried oh. to pass it, and he had a... Probably an open shot there. Yeah, you got to take that. You had nowhere to go with that passing-wise. Up top is Rich. Now he gives it to Giovino. Giovino throws it to E. O'Brien. Higginbottom drives. It pulls up. Inside turnaround jumper is long. It's still loose, and it's taken away by Corby. Corby drives and gives it up to Vicari. Puts on the brakes. Now it goes up top to Adams. Adams drives. Puts up a floater. It's no good, but he's going to get called for an offensive foul. Yeah, that's another situation where I feel like Vakari should have taken that shot. Had a pretty open look there on the short corner. But yeah, decided to pass. You're right. Take a 12-footer when you're open. Giovino now. Offenses have settled down a little bit. There's an air ball. Now Giovino gets the air ball and puts it in now. Worst thing that happens when an air ball usually ends up into the hands of the guy who shot it. Expecting something to hit the rim, and it didn't that time. And Giovino was standing wide open. He made the bucket, and the Wolverines have a six-point lead with 2.30 to go in the first half. You gotta stay with it every step of the way. O'Brien drives, puts up no good, but it's rebound loose on the floor. And again, the Wolverines come away with it, and Higginbottom tries to throw up a shot. But he is fouled. And uh, Coach Keene imploring his team to hang on to the first rebound. Higginbottom throws up the left-hander and rims long. This Westwood team doesn't get tired. I mean, they've had their starters in for the majority of the game. They've had a few substitutions here and there, but this team is just a fast-moving uh, play at a rapid pace kind of team. And Higginbottom makes the second. And Corby looks to get over the midcourt line. He'll back to Zarapusko. Zarapusko to Zizitsky. 
Inside to Odell. He's double teamed. He almost throws it away. And he a good steal. An attempt by Rich, but he stepped out before he did. 14 seconds on the shot clock. With two minutes and five seconds to go in quarter number two. Rich is a fun player to watch. Seems like wherever the ball is, he is. He's pretty quick. Corby to Odell. Back to Zarapuska. There's two seconds on the shot clock, and the shot goes off. It's a rebounded by Zarapusco. Goes to Adams. Adams inside to Odell. Off glass is good. So who's ever playing that spot inside on the baseline is making buckets. Oh, yeah, Odell or Canal. Put one of them there, and you have a good chance at getting points. That was a beauty right off the glass. Miller's Higginbottom. He is blocked, and the Hiller faithful doesn't like it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, the official has a much better view than we do, but I didn't see the contact. I saw a good block is what I saw. That ref just who called it Higginbottom will go to the free throw line. It's 16 fouls on the Hillers here. And so Westwood has six, and he makes the first free throw. Six-point lead for the Wolverines. And a pair of free throws for Higginbottom, the senior. Adams races up, puts on the break, and gets called for travels. He got defensive pressure by Devontae Higginbottom, and he dragged both feet. The Wolverines are going to try to do that to you, force the turnovers. Alert. They know they won't win the battle in the low post. And here's a drive by Giovino. Corby stays right with him, though. Now back to Rich. Rich drives to the bucket. Now tries to go inside. It's loose, but he gets it back. And boy, he's got a few moves here. Blows up a left-hander. It's no good, but he's fouled. And now it seems like every time the Wolverines drive to the bucket, they are going to the free throw line. Well, it'll be one way, Tom, to limit the big men for the Hill is get them into foul trouble. Certainly, they're just forcing it down the lane and forcing their way in the interior and drawing up the fouls. And they're doing it to perfection. And Tom Rich, the junior, misses the first. And throws up a knuckleball and misses the second. Adams has trouble with it, but he has it now and gives it to Nick Stanley. Stanley pressured, looking to give the ball up. He gives it to Corby. Corby looking to drive. And inside it goes to Odell as Odell ha can't catch it. His pass was kind of a bad pass to him. If you have any kind of errant pass, they're going to steal it. And look at that, st stolen back. Yeah, that, that's when they want to stay under control a little bit. Nice steal by Zazitsky, but he rushed the pass and they threw it into the cheerleaders. And Corby was wide open, but you got you got to make sure you have the pass, or you're going to end up with a, another turnover. Well, 30 seconds to go in the first half. Higginbottom gets it back now. He looks to drive. He's bumped to Rich. Higginbottom gets it back. He drives. Pull-up jumper is no good. And it's, came, comes down. It's taken away. Hillers have 10 seconds to go. Zarapusco looking to drive. Puts on the brakes. He falls. And Rich dives at him. But he's going to get called for a foul. As he drove, dove into the legs. And so a one and one situation, which is good for Hopkinton now. Nice job by Sarapusco, sticking with the dribble there. And Zarapusco, the senior guard to the free throw line. Hillers trailing by seven. And he makes the first of a one and one. It's his fifth point of the night. There is eight seconds to go as Sarapusco makes the second. So enough time for the Wolverines to get off a decent shot. Hiller's back up, though. And with five seconds to go, Higginbottom drives. Pull-up jumper from the foul line is off the rim. No good. Tipped up by Rich. Would have counted, but it didn't go in. So the 
first half comes to an end with the Hillers trailing by five. As they're gonna, both teams will go to the locker room, and we talked a little bit, Tom. The inside presence of Hopkinton is why they're in this game. Yeah, it really is, and just the offensive play in the low post and the height advantage, it's really helping out the Hillers and making this more of a back-and-forth battle. Austin O'Dell and Nick Cannell have really been the uh, dominant forces in this game, especially Nick Cannell, but you notice towards the end of that second quarter, Westwood tr uh, started to slow him up a little bit, and then they kind of resorted to Austin O'Dell. But the Hillers, they're going to need to keep trying to exploit that low post because you have a clear height advantage and you, you have uh, some low post players that can uh, really get going scoring-wise. So. And we will be back with second half action in just a moment. We get ready for second half action. You're watching Hiller basketball. I'm Mike Prate with Tom Nappy and our crew here tonight. The Hillers find themselves trailing 33-28, and Tom has a rundown of the uh, scoring as the Hillers at the end of one were tied at 17 all, but the Wolverines ran, ran a little bit up on the Hillers. And so, Tom, what do you got as the score? Well, uh, scoring-wise, Connor Sarapusco has six points. Lone three-point shot with uh, three free throws. Austin O'Dell has seven pair of field goals with three free throws. Nick Cannell has 12 points off of all field goals, six field goals, all from the low post. Zach Sasitsky has three points uh, from a three-point bucket. Uh, Tom Rich for Westwood has two points, lone field goal. Tim Giovino, lone field goal with two. Charles Bemis leading the way for Westwood with 12. He's been kind of their low post guy this game. Reed Wilson with three. Aiden Fitzgibbons with two. Ian O'Brien with five. A three-point bucket and a two-point field goal. And Dylan Linehan with four. And rounding it out, Devontae Higginbottom, three points off of free throws. All right, so the Westwood Wolverines will have the ball to start the second half. And Giovino has it now. As those are in a zone, it looks like a zone and one. And there's a whistle. There's some reason. Now the shot clocks didn't go on for some reason. And now they do, so they're going to have to run down to 23 seconds. And there it is. And so Westwood will inbound it again. Which didn't seem fair to them, but. Anyway, Giovino now driving on Corby. Good defense by him. Foul line inside jump. Right hander is good. Wow, what a circus <laughs> shot by Reed Wilson. High off the glass. Bakari up top to Corby. Zarapusco now. And Wolverines trying to take away the inside presence of Canal. Canal gets it on top. Goes inside to Adams. It's tipped in good hands by Fitzgibbon. That pass has got to be a lot longer for that to happen. Fitzgibbon is going to get called for travel as he dragged his right foot. Yeah, Adams and Canal should have switched spots on that situation. And here is the double team now. Corby now is being guarded by Giovino looking to make a play. Zarapusco up top to Adams. Adams has the ball down too low. It's dangerous. Luckily he got it back. Good defense now by the Wolverines now with five, eight seconds on the shot clock. Corby throws it away. He probably should have taken a layup there. As he tried to pass it to the wing. And a turnover by Hopkinton. Yeah, that's one of those times you just want to take it down the lane, see if you could draw up a foul at least. Especially under 10 seconds. There's a three ball. Rims long. It's through the hands of Canal, but he gets it back. And Corby, the Hillers try to push. Adams driving the baseline, puts the brakes on. And now Sarapusco looking to drive between his legs. 
Defended nicely. Now the Wolverines, here's a drive by Adams. Puts on the brakes, on the baseline. Back up top to Corby. Corby drives, tries to go to Canal. He just threw him an impossible pass to get it back. 10 seconds on the shot clock. His three ball by Zarapusko, and he hits it. There's a whistle. Oh, what's this? Adams, let's see. I'm not sure what happened there. All right, they counted the bucket on the scoreboard. And Adams is going to take a seat. And so the time clock is going to try to figure out what happened there. The three counts. And uh, I think there was a foul on the play. Yeah, actually there are fouls on both teams. Since one each goes up on the scoreboard. Did you have a chance to ask them, Tom? Would they put them up? Uh, well, they got a new scoreboard operator tonight, oh. so <laughs> <laughs> he, he has his work cut out for him with this game. Uh, okay. Well, we were trying to ask whether that they could put the player fouls up so we can see it. There's an inside pass to Linehan. He puts it up. It's blocked partially by Odell, it looks like. And his last touch by Westwood, as Reed Wilson can't believe it. it went right through his hands. It was trail by four. That's the uh, lacrosse head coach, Dan Norton, doing the scoreboard tonight. Okay. Doing pretty good for his first time, I must say. And try to get it in bounds, and they don't. It's tapped out of bounds. Last touch by Westwood. Westwood giving the Hillers some problems now on the inbounds. They do get it up to half court because of a tipped out of bounds play there. Zitsky's going to inbound it. He gives it to Stanley. Stanley being guarded by Giovino. Zitsky with it. Up top to Canal. Canal inside to Odell. Odell puts it up. He's blocked, but he gets it back, puts it up, and he's fouled. That is a big and one there. And he's lucky. The defender that was guarding him fell, and he had the wide open look. Well, initially, Hopkinton faithful was thinking it was a foul on the initial shot, but there wasn't. It looked like a pretty good block. Here's Odell trying to make a traditional three-point play, and he does. He goes down by two. Uh, by one. Uh, by two, check that. Uh, by one. There's a lot of lights missing in that. <laughs> Giovino. It'll be fixed next year, Tom, when I'm not doing the games. <laughs> Here's a drive scoop shot. It goes in. Boy, hit the front of the rim. Fitzgibbon's got a break there. And it extends the... Lead 37-34. Well, they figured you're good enough. You don't need the lights. <laughs> the burnt out bulbs. <laughs> yeah. Inside our bad pass. Canal tries to save it. He does. And he has to dive for the ball. He gets it back. Oh, inside to Odell. Puts up a right hander. No good. Rebounded by the Wolverines. They race up court. Reed Wilson now gives it to Giovino. Gets it back. Here's a three ball by Wilson. It goes wow. in. Out. In for the three. That was quite a sequence. Zarapusko now is being pressured, but he gets over the midcourt line. And now Zizitsky gives it up to Odell, to Stanley. Stanley looking to drive back up top to Zizitsky. He drives, goes inside to Odell. He's pressured, and he stepped out of bounds, though, with Linehan. He got there, and he read that play perfectly. They're doing a better job on that, Tom, of you know, intercepting the inside play. Got to come in from a different angle, it looks like to me. But Yeah, they're doing anything they can to not let Odell uh, and Canal exploit the interior. And Canal drove to the bucket. There's a foul. And Canal's going to go to the free throw line to shoot a pair. Hiller's trail by six with 4.18 to go in the third quarter. Canal misses the first. Nick on his way to Cornell, where I think he's going to play football. Yeah, he, he's really developed into a great football player over his high school career. And so he misses a pair of free throws. Now the drive to the bucket by Fitzgibbon. Pull up jumper is good. Westwood, just when you got close, they put the brakes on Hopkinton, and now 
They've jumped out to an eight point lead. Zizitsky having trouble now, he drives. Turnaround jumper is good. <laughs> Hillers down by six. It'd be great if the Hillers could start hitting from the middle level. They, just to spread things out so the big men aren't backed in. There's a right. shot that's wild. I think he might have got a piece of it. Now Canal gets it, but a whistle as Adele's going to get called for on the floor foul, I think. Yeah. That was before the shot there. Oh, they're going to give him two shots. Yeah, I think uh, he might have got a piece of him when he uh, went up for the block there. Mm -hmm. And that's been the flaw for the Hillers is they haven't really been able to spread out their shots, and they've been making them mostly from the low post, so that's where the Westwood defenders are. And Linehan makes the first. And he makes the second. Extends the Wolverine lead to eight. Corby looking to get up court. He breaks it, now he pulls it back. Rapusco comes and rescues him. Now Corby will set things up. Between the legs, Corby. And good defense. Now Canal looking to drive. Puts up a right-hander, short. Loose on the floor, uh, loose in the air. And taken away by Bemis. Bemis gets it back. Puts up a right-hander and he drops it in. And Hill is down 10 now. With three minutes and nine seconds to go in the third quarter. There's a foul there, reaching foul, but Corby got some of that too. He got it in the head there. And there's going to be an injury timeout. Yeah, a little shooken up there. It's Giovino. Corby's head went into, I believe, Giovino's face. And there's going to be a timeout on the court with the Hillers calling it. 3.02 to go in the third quarter. Hillers down 10. Well, this Westwood team, I mean, they came into this third quarter with the mentality that they are not going to let the Hillers exploit those baseline jumpers and use their height to their advantage. They're doing a nice job at boxing out, and they're forcing Hillers to take shots from the mid-level or beyond the perimeter, and the Hillers haven't been able to hit many of those shots, and they have to get going, I think, uh, from three-point land to get back into this game. Hopkinton, as we said in the opening, needs this win to make the tournament, and it's a must win for the Wolverines if they want to win the TVL. So that's where this game stands. And right now there's already five teams going to the postseason out of the TVL on the boys' side. You got Medfield at 16 and three, Dover Sherborne 14 and six. Westwood 15 and 6, Medway 15 and 5, and Holliston made it this year. They're 10 and 9 right now. It's a strong TVL this year. Sure is. And on the girls' side, there's six teams going from the TVL out of the nine. And our first game of our doubleheader, the Wolverines beat the Hillers. And the boys trying to not have a doubleheader sweep by the Wolverines with 3.02 to go. In the third quarter, Hopkinton trailing by 10. They will inbounds as Adams will do it. Adams looking for someone to spring open and throws it inside to Odell. Odell, and there's a tie up. And Hopkinton retains the ball. I thought that would have been a foul there on Rich. He reached in, he must have got a lot of the ball, I guess, right? I guess so. It's uh, touched by Higginbottoms. It was knocked out of. And Hill's got to get an inbound play here. They're having problems getting it in. And they do finally. Zarapusco put over to two-hand pass inbounds. Now Corby now looking to drive. Goes inside, but it goes through the hands. Rector comes away with it, but he can't control it. And the Higginbottom steals it. Levante Higginbottom gives it up to Linehan. Dylan Linehan, the junior. Inside it goes. Bemis turnaround jumpers. Blocked. Still loose. And it's a tie-up. This time Westwood will retain it. And Canal's going to check in for Rector. And the inbound comes in. Westwood 
Up top, Rich, almost a steal by Corby. Rich drives, now puts up a left-hander, rims long, it's rebounded by Canal. The Hill is trying to push the ball. Zarapusco, cross court, it goes to Corby for three. And it rims in and out, rebounded by Giovino, loses the handle, now Canal gets it. He drives, and there's a foul, as Linehan had to reach in to stop an easy bucket for Canal. Good steal there by the, the Canal. Westwood picks up their fifth team foul. The Hillers have two. And so Canal will go to the free throw line with the Hillers trailing by 10. And he makes the first. Canal one for four from the free throw line tonight. And he makes the second. The Hillers down eight. Higginbottom, inside, good tip, and it's taken away by Corby. He's almost fouled there. Now Zarapusco races up court. He drives, puts up a le left-hander. It drops in, goes down six. 46-40 with a minute and 50 to go in the third quarter. Still a long way to go in this one. He was defending a little bit better here now. Higginbottom though, inside pass, pump fake, put up shot, no good, rebound, comes into the hand of Rich, it's fought for it, tie up, and now Hopkinton will get it back. And a good tie up by Jimmy Adams. Hiller's just crowding that low post with defenders. And it's bringing off. Yeah, inbounds to Corby now, Corby being guarded by Giovino. Zarapusco inside to Canal. Canal to Corby looking to drive, pulls it back. Up top to Zarapusco, inside to Canal. Canal turnaround jumper off glass is good. It was cut it to within four. They won't go away, this Hopkinton team. They were trailing by 10, and now trail by four. Well, they're playing for everything in this game. And Giovino holds over his head, now puts it on the floor. Being guarded by Adams. Mid-level jumper is no good. Higginbottom drives in, but it's rebounded by Canal. Canal to Corby, looking to race. Cross court to Zarapusco, puts on the break to Canal. Canal puts it on the floor, almost taken away. Now to the side to Adams. Now it is taken away, but it's still loose. Adams gets it back. Kind of a sloppy play here. Now Corby looking to drive. Zarapusco for three. It's long, rebound, a push off. And the push off against Giovanino. Now check that, it's gonna be against Charlie Bemis. So Hopkinton will get it back with 34 seconds to go in the quarter, third quarter. And Bemis is gonna to have to come out. I'm not sure what his foul total is, but I would imagine that's why he's taking the break there. Inbounds to Odell. Inside the canal, he's double teamed and he's fouled. He tries to dunk it, but it will not count. The Wolverines pick up their 16 foul. Canal's going to inbound it from underneath their own basket with 30 seconds exactly to go on the shot clock. Oh, that check that. It's going to be a one and one. The, this is great for the Hillers. It's still the third quarter. You have a whole other quarter left to play. You got Westwood in early foul trouble. Before you know it, it'll be double bonus time. But you have to take advantage of these free throw opportunities. Well, an important thing for the Hiller up front men is hang on to the ball with two hands when it's thrown into the post. For, for the most part, they're doing a pretty good job of that. Canal on the one-on-one -on -one misses it, and Higginbottom skies, and he gets it one-handed. Levante Higginbottom, the senior, one of the three seniors on this Wolverine team. It's a smooth-looking player. And he checks the clock. They're going to hold for the final shot. Press on one side of the court, almost a steal by Zarapusco. Higginbottom's looking to drive, five seconds. It's good hands by Zarapusco with 3.1 seconds to go in the third quarter. Westwood retains the ball. And they're looking to try to get it in. It's a steal, and here's Corby with one second. He's got to put it up, he puts it up fast, and he oh, makes wow. it! 
Cooper Corby with a steal, and he threw up a left-hander, and he brings the Hillers within two. That is a nice momentum shift for you right there to end the third quarter, get within two. That's exactly what you needed. 46-44 as we go to the break, as you look at the Hiller cheerleaders on center court. Well, a must, must win for Hopkinton. And there's not many games this Hillers team has gone down easy. They're not going down without a fight. Well, as Tom pointed out, a couple of things in Hopkins' favor. Of course, they're home. I think the Hiller record at home is pretty good. Let me see if I can find it for you. I think I wrote it down somewhere. Uh, they are the Hillers are six and two, Tom, at home, three and eight on the road. This uh, Westwood team is seven and four on the road. So you got the home crowd, and then Tom mentioned before the seven team fouls is going to play a part into this. The Hillers only have two. So you've got a few right. to give on some easy layups. I hate to sound oh, barbaric, yeah. but that's and what you got to do, right? Yeah, what you should do there is rush down the lane. Try to see if you could draw those fouls. Worst case, you get called for a charge, but you have a few to give. But more so than not, you're probably going to be able to draw the fouls, especially if you send a big guy down the lane. Right, Westwood now will inbound here to start the fourth quarter. And they do, there's Giovini, Giovino to Higginbottom. He's pressured by Corby, Corby right in his face. Now outside it goes to Wilson. Wilson down on the baseline to Giovino. Giovino being pressured. Cross court it goes, down on the baseline to Linehan. Well, there's a travel and so a turnover for the Wolverines. Hillers can tie the game. And Jimmy Adams is going to inbound. It's going to be a full court press. Corby gets it. Throws it up to Adams. Adams gets over. Easily drives. Puts on the brakes. Back to Corby. He gets it off the floor. Now Sarapusco goes inside the canal. He's double teamed. Puts it up off the rim and it's good. Feed the big man. Well, that thing looked like it was going to bound out there. Canal ties it. Now Westwood looking to spring Higginbottom. He drives, pull up, jump shot is defended nicely. It's loose on the floor. It's still loose. Higginbottom pump fakes, and it's blocked by Canal, and it's last touch by him. Nick Canal, the first team TVL All Star, doing damage here now in the last minute or so. Inbound pass is blocked, and it's taken away by Odell. He gives it to Adams. Adams gets over the mid-court line. And he puts on the brakes. Back to Corby. Zarapusco for three. It's good! And the Hillers have roared back here and taken a three-point lead as we start the fourth quarter. Connor Zarapusco from three-point land for his third time tonight. 14 points on the night. He's really coming through clutch. The Hillers have not had a lead in this ball game until right now, I believe, Tom. It's 49-46. Actually, the very first oh, okay, couple right, plays right. in the first quarter. <laughs> well, since the first <laughs> half, since the first quarter, when it was knotted at 17 all, at the end of the half, the Hillers trailed by five. They trailed by two, getting into the fourth quarter here, and now have taken a three-point lead with 6:48 to go in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it's quite impressive. They, they never gave up. Westwood was trying to run away with this game, put the Hillers away early. This is Westwood's last game of the season, too. They want to get ready for the postseason. So they try to put them away, thinking that once they're up by 10, they'll be good to go. And then the Hillers came roaring back, and now it's a ball game once again. Yeah, the Wolverines, as Tom just said, they had a 10-point lead at one point in that third quarter. Inside pass to Linehan. He drives, puts it up, no good. Rebound loose, and it's taken away by Canal, but he's hammered on the floor and it was about time he looks like it it's about time and he's going to go to the free throw line yep and in front of a one and one and that was a frustration foul by westwood they are frustrated they are just getting destroyed by nick canal in the low post and 
Canal is going to go to the free throw line, and he misses it, and it doesn't touch anything, so the ball goes back to Westwood. Westwood must win this game, too, if they want to win the TVL crown. They are already in the tournament, so it means a lot to them, too. We believe they can hold the outright TVL crown if they beat Hopkinton tonight, but for Hopkinton, they must win to play on in this season. Right now they lead by three. Inside, pull-up jumper is no good. It's rebounded by Adams, who gone over his man and got it. Corby to Zerapusco. Now Corby gets it back. Adams open, looking to drive, gets into the lane. Now gives it back to Zerapusco. Three-pointer for him, and it goes in and out. Rebounded by Canal, put it back up. No, I mean, say Odell, he missed it, but he's fouled. Odell just set up shop right underneath the bucket. And that was just a great job. No. The force inside now here, Tom, between two minutes to go in that third quarter and here early in the fourth quarter, inside presence for the Hills both ends of the court has been pretty good. It's been the difference maker. They say pretty good. That's an obvious statement. It's been better than pretty good. It's been really good. Here's Odell trying to make the first end of a one-on-one. -on -one. He does. He extends the Hiller lead to four. And the second one is also good. Six minutes and four seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Hopkinton extends their lead to five. And now Giovino trying to drive. Giovino being double teamed. Goes over to Fitzgibbons. Now to Higginbottom. Throws it back to Fitzgibbons. There's 10 seconds on the shot clock. Side jumper. Inside pass is last touch by the Wolverines. A turnover. Hillers are in the Wolverines' heads right now. And Corby gets the inbound pass. He's being guarded by Giovino. And he gets over the midcourt line. Hill's looking to set up a play. Adams looking to go inside to Canal, but he thinks wisely. It was triple team. Now to Canal. Inside. Mid-level. I mean, uh, turnaround jumper is good. Hillers by seven. Uh, check that six. No, I was right seven. I was right after you give me two chances. <laughs> inside to Rich. Rich pulls it back. Hiller Bigman. Now here's a three ball. And it's good. Aiden Fitzgibbon, the junior, knocks down a three. Cuts the Hiller lead back to four. Hiller's slowing things down now, trying to run clock a bit. Adams to Odell, inside to Canal. He's inside, and he is fouled. And he will go to the free throw line to shoot a pair as Rich fouls him. Yeah, and it's going to be double bonus time for the Hillers as well. It's also a timeout on the court. It's the Wolverines call it. Steve St. Martin trying to implore his team to do a little bit better job inside. And they are having troubles now again like they were in that first quarter and midway through the second quarter. Well, that has been the difference maker for the Hillers. Nick Canal getting underneath the bucket with those baseline jumpers and just exploiting the height advantage that the Hillers have. And plus, Nick Canal is also hitting his shots tonight. Just about every opportunity he gets from for a baseline jumper, he's hitting. And that's just been huge for the Hillers. And this Hiller team in a must-win situation has answered the bell here so far. They, as Tom pointed out a few minutes ago, they could have folded when they were down 10, but they didn't. They roared back here, and they now have a four-point lead with a chance to extend it. As Canal will go to the free throw line to shoot a pair as the Wolverines are in the double bonus or the Hillers are in the double bonus. Well, they're going to shoot double bonus, I should say, but that is the 10th team foul for the Wolverines, and Canal makes the first. 21 points on the night for Canal. There's 22. And he has led the charge. The inside game of him and Odell, though, really has been strong here tonight. Now Rich looking to drive. To the side it goes. Fitzgibbon, who made a three a few moments ago. Now back to Giovino. Giovino looking for a pick. Adams stays with him. 
Now to the baseline, pull up jumper is no good. It's rebounded by Corby. Corby pushes it to Serapusco. Serapusco thought about giving it to Adams, but it was smart to pull it back. Inside it goes to Adams. Turnaround jumper is off glass and good. The Hillers by eight with four minutes and 10 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. That pass was perfect. It was right by the defender into the hands of Adams. And he gathered and made an easy bucket. Higginbottom drives. He is blocked. It's rebounded by Rich, who puts it up and out and, out and in. I don't think he believed how wide open he was there, Tom. Here's Canal looking to drive. Now he's going to be triple team. Throws it back up top, and Corby has to save it, and he does, but it's into the hands of Higginbottom. And the Hill's got to be careful now with the ball. They're up by six. Here's a drive. A three ball for Giovino is no good. Rebound through the hands of a couple of Hillers. Canal picks it off the floor, up court, and there's Adams who oh. races. And there again, where you oh, just got to be a little bit patient there. He's wide open up the floor. He did not have to rush that pass. He could have took his time, turned around, gently threw it up court, and Adams would have had an easy bucket. You know, the timeout on the court, as Coach Keene calls it, because he wants to slow things down in here a little bit. Not so much the pace, but the decision-making ability of the squad. And so they lead by six with 3.28 to go in the fourth quarter due to the Hillers. Yeah, and I think the Hillers are playing a little bit better with the, the slower pace offensively, distributing the ball around the perimeter and then finding Odell near the base, or Canal near the baseline. Uh, it's, it's working for him, the moderate pace offensively, and then as far as defensively, getting in there, being aggressive, and stealing away the, the ball uh, has been working well for the Hillers in this half. And you can be aggressive, Tom, because the Hillers, as we pointed out, still only with two team fouls. And so, you know, if w the Wolverines come down the lane, you can hammer a little bit there to try to, you know, throw them off their game a bit. But uh, Hopkinton, by the way, has already surpassed their season average in points. They're at 57. They've been averaging just over 51 points a game. The Wolverines were averaging 57, uh, 58 points a game. And uh, the Hillers defensive-wise were averaging, giving up 52.3 points a game. So Hopkinton doing the things they need to do now to win a must win as Rich gets the inbounds pass. Higginbottom runs the baseline, a rich drives. He puts up a right-hander. He is tripped before he goes to the free throw line, uh, before he goes to the bucket. And no, they're going to say he was shooting the ball. I thought he tripped on the floor first and then threw up a shot, but I guess. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that should have been an inbound, but it was so close. And rich okay. makes the first free throw. And that's not the scenario. We we're talking about you don't want these guys making free throws on their way back into the game and Rich will take the second one and he misses it and rebounded by Odell. Odell up court to Zarapusco, puts on the brakes, cross court to Canal, Canal looking to drive, puts up a right hander and it's good. <laughs> Looks like he might have got fouled on the way in there too actually in the right hand but he doesn't matter he gives the Hillers a seven point lead. With under three minutes to go in the fourth. Higginbottom looking to drive. Now puts up a shot. Rich pull up jumper from the foul line is long, but he is fouled. And Sarapusco a little bit too diligent trying to get out there. You can't give enough credit to Nick Canal tonight, the way he's playing. He's really taking this offense on his back. And not only did he obviously put him back in the game, but he's now giving the Hillers the lead. Rich just missed a one and one. Uh, sorry, missed a one of two the last one. Now he just missed another one there. Hillers by seven, 2.49 to go in the fourth. Rich, one for five from the line overall. And he misses the second. It's rebounded by Canal, boxed out his man. Boy, Sarabusco was wide open, but smart play by Canal. You didn't want to throw that away. You know, there was a wide open play underneath, but there's a throw and ball away there. What it does too, it stops the clock. And I'll bet you anything, when, when Coach Keen called that timeout a few minutes ago, that's one of the things he said, don't have those big passes up court, they're not working. Keep it small. All right, the Wolverines now get it back, a drive towards the bucket, good hands by Corby, as he knocks it out of bounds. He 
defended that nicely. 2.27 to go in the fourth. Must win for Hopkins. And Adams pressuring the inbounds pass. There's going to be a, a ball thrown to the sideline there. Boy, that just got in there, it looked like, too. And Wilson drives, puts up a right hand, is blocked from behind, but he's going to also go to the free throw line. As looks like Adams may have gotten him there. This is going to be the Westwood strategy. Run down the lane, draw the fouls. They're going to do this the rest of the game. Well, it just ate up about 15 seconds on the shot clock, but now they're going to try to get points with the clock stopped. And Wilson makes the first. A six-point lead for the Hillers with 2.20 to go. And the clock is slowly moving. And Wilson misses the second, rebounded by Canal. Adams with it now. Gets over the midcourt line. Gives it to Corby. Higginbottoms tries the steal. Adams back up top to Canal. Inside to Odell. Mid-level jumper is no good, but is a foul on the floor. But it doesn't matter because the Hillers will shoot two free throws. Yeah, nice job, Odell. Wide open, except the pass. Right in the low post. Drop the fouls. And that took off 15 seconds on the clock, and so Odell will shoot a pair, and he misses the first. That was not the time to miss free throws. And the Wolverines will substitute in. Linehan checks back in. And Bemis goes out. Odell's second free throw is also missed. Oh, but uh, there's a foul. It's, Canal was going to get that rebound easy. And Higginbottom had to foul him because if he didn't, that was going to be a putback, an easy putback for Canal. And now Canal will shoot a pair. Right, it was probably a good foul for Westwood for Higginbottom. <laughs> Canal just threw up a shot that went hard off the backboard. Takes the second one, he makes the second one. And Hillers are back by seven with two minutes to go. And that made it a three possession game. Higginbottom puts on the brakes. Now here's a three ball by Wilson. The rim's long, but Higginbottom comes in, puts up a shot, and he puts it in. Gets a rebound, and that's a rebound the Hillers got to have there on the missed shot. They didn't. Adams now drives. Boy, he almost got fouled. And there's a foul against Linehan. Nope, check that. Yeah, I think they got Adams with the, with the charge. Yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah, I'm not sure. You're right, Tom, but that's not good for Hopkinton now as they lead by five and timeout on the court. With a minute and 45 to go in the fourth quarter, the Hillers hanging on to a five-point lead. I figured Coach Keene would have something to say about that call. I wasn't really a fan of it either. I didn't quite see the contact. But what a game this has been. Hiller's putting everything on the line here. Obviously, they're playing to get a postseason spot, but they've played a terrific ball game, and they're doing it against one of the best teams in the state. Now, this Wolverine team, as we mentioned in the beginning of the game, they have uh, six losses, and only two of them came in the, conf in the division. Their other four losses were against quality opponents. Tom brought up the fact that they beat they lost to uh, Bishop Fian, and that is a powerhouse squad this year. On and both the girls and the boys side. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, so Westwood will inbounds. And what's unusual for this Hiller team, Tom, they really have impressed, which has been their, you know, modus operandi all year. They usually press teams, and they really haven't done it tonight on the defensive side. Now, as I say that, it looks like they're going to force them to move up court. Canal is back. Well, I, th I think part of the reason they didn't do that early on is because they were having so much success in the low post rebounding-wise. Oh, that's a travel. Yeah, you're right. And that, and that out of the break, the um, full court press actually gave the Wolverines a little issue there. They weren't expecting it, and they uh, turned it over on a travel. Hillers will get it back. A minute and 37 to go. Inbounds to Canal. Canal to Adams. He's bumped off the ball. 
Zarapuska holds high, now to Canal. Pump fakes, he puts it up, it's blocked, but Adele gets it, puts it up off glass, no good, but there's a whistle. Foul. And it is going to be, be a foul. The, I don't know who this is against, it looks like the Hillers. Yeah, push. Nope. Oh. Nope. Well, I thought so too, Tom. It looked like that because the Hillers started walking down the court, and I thought, wow. I think they thought they did something wrong as well, and now they're going to talk it over again. Well, there's a timeout on the court. And the timeout, I believe, was assigned to the Wolverines. We have a tight ball game here, 60-55, with a minute and 27 seconds to go. The Hillers need a victory to make the tournament. And uh, it seems, Tom, the last two minutes and 40 seconds has dragged, I'd say probably at least 10 or 10 or 12 minutes it seems like to me Yeah, between the timeouts and stuff it was a relatively quick moving game until we had about 240 left and ever since then a second is hard to come by and the Hillers really could have put this game away if they made some free throws here and Odell misses the first the pressure to make free throws when you need them has been rough and Odell misses the second, Ooh. but it's rebounded, and it's taken away by Giovini, Giovinino. And he puts on the brakes. Now he tries to call a play. It goes to the side. Now inside to Higginbottom. He drives, backhands, puts it up, and he's fouled, and it almost dropped in. Hillers are lucky that did not drop in. And Higginbottom, he's a good free throw shooter. So good chance he can make this a one possession game. Well, the story of the Hiller season all along, if the fans have been watching it, they have had their issues on the free throw line. And Higginbottom makes the first, and it's really cost Hopkinton here now as the Wolverines cut the lead to four. I'd say just about any game that's within seven points usually comes down to free throws. Well, the Hillers have had their chances, though. They have. They've missed a lot of important free throws. Higginbottom, second one is also through. And the Wolverines by three. Torby on the inbound. He is fouled. They want to see if the Hillers will make free throws. Smart. No question. Instead of allowing them to find Canal in the low post, send him to the line. They haven't had much success there. Adams and Odell will get back as Corby will go to the free throw line. He's a pretty good free throw shooter. And he misses the first. Oh boy. We are trying to do our best in keeping you apprised of what's happening with the score, but based on the free throws, the Hillers have missed a lot here in this last two minutes. Corby throws up the second and he makes it. And it gives the Hillers a four point lead. With a minute and 13, Giovino races up court. And out to the side it goes to Wilson. Wilson drives, gets to the foul line. Bemis looking to set up inside. Here's Wilson with the ball. Wilson pull up jumper is good. Timeout on the court. With 55 seconds to go. Hillers lead by two. This game's almost been a bit of a chess match too between the two coaches. It's been a great battle back and forth and really every aspect of the game. Well, Hillers are trying to draw up a play. They got to get some points here to keep a uh, two possession game in their favor. 55.7 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. I think what they do here is yeah, you don't want to have a big pass and have a chance that it gets intercepted. You, you need to have something close to the inbounder and then try to get it in the low post. But Westwood might be able to follow you immediately and send you back to the line. Well, the people you want to foul. Are typically the big men, although Canal has made some free throws tonight. And Jimmy Adams is going to inbound the ball, and it's a full court press going against this Hiller team. They've got to get an inbound play in. And 
They do. Sarapusco gets it. And he's the guy you'd love to foul because and he is fouled. Ooh, it looks like he took the ball off the face there. Connor is a I, I'm gonna jinx him, I know, but I know for a fact he's a really good free throw shooter. And I hope for your sake he makes these. <laughs> well, <laughs> he really is. He's got a nice stroke watch. So far on the night, he's three for four from the charity strike. 51 seconds to go, Hopkinton by two. He's quietly had a nice night too, 14 points for Sarapusco. And he makes, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Well, if I'm jinxing him that way, I should be able to jinx him the other way, right? That's right. <laughs> and Sarapusco trying to make one of two, and that time he drops it through. Hillers by three. That's a big one. Hillers are pressing. Higginbottoms looking for help now as he's being pressured. Higginbottoms throws it up court. He gets it over. Wide open. Oh, play. oh good hands by Canal. And Adams races for it. He gets it. And he is fouled. Good oh. job by Adams hanging on to that. Jimmy Adams. Actually, they're going to call it out of bounds. Yep. And uh, Coach Keane's going to call a timeout. He wants to get make sure they get a good play in here. Jimmy Adams right there may have saved the Hiller season. With 34 seconds to go. That ball was loose all over the place. Any Westwood Wolverine picks that up. Yeah, Higgin bought him is right in the area. And Adams just sniped it away from him. That was a huge, huge play. Miller student body up off th their seats. They're standing up, imploring this team to get to the tournament. This is one of the more exciting games, Tom, I've ever had to witness in all the games I've been doing stuff for HCAM. And uh, really, it's an, it really has been some ball game. The Hillers at one point had trailed in that third quarter by 10. They then had a seven point lead here in the fourth quarter but now are hanging on to a three point lead with 34.8 seconds to go. Yeah, they just never gave in. They, they just uh, kept playing, kept trying to exploit the low post and it, and it paid off. All right, now there's a three players each in the backcourt plus Odell who's gonna inbound. And it goes to Adams, he loses it. Oh boy. Now Westwood looking to drive. They put up, oh, that should have been a walk right there as Gaffney got away with it. Now Higginbottom drives. He pulls up jumper. It is no good. Rebound, and it's thrown out of bounds with 19.3 seconds to go. That was uh, a game saver there by Aiden Fitzgibbons, putting it out of bounds off of Adams. And they're going to set up a stack play. Are the Wolverines underneath their own basket? Need the three here. And it goes to the sideline. Up top to Higginbottom, fakes the three, now drives, puts up a shot. He is, puts it in. And the Hillers lead by one. And a timeout on the court. Well, you know Westwood's gonna foul here immediately. They're gonna send the Hillers to the line. And they expect the Hillers to hit maybe one of two free throws, if any, with the way they've been shooting from the line tonight. And if they hit both, Still gives Westwood the chance at the three-point bucket. So that's why they went for the two there. Well, Devontae Higginbottom, Tom, has really led this team here in this fourth quarter, and particularly the last two or three minutes with some grace under pressure. He slithered his way into the middle of the court there, faked, and then put up a shot and brought his team within one. On the line for this Wolverine team, as we've been mentioning all game, is a chance for them to win the TVL. Right. More importantly though for the Hiller faithful is Hopkinton needs it to make the tournament. It's that simple and it's gonna come down to 11 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. Jimmy Adams is going to inbound and they must get a ball in here. 
And he does. Zarabusco, and he is fouled, and it's the right guy to foul because Connor Zarabusco is a really good free throw shooting player for this Hiller squad. Four for six on the night from the line. The clock has 8.9 seconds to go. And the crowd has quieted down on the Hiller side. Zarapusco just made one of two moments ago. His father, I can see him in the stands, is not looking. <laughs> and Connor misses the first. Got to hit this one. And the second free throw is good. So only a three can beat the Hillers. Giovino inbounds. Five seconds to go. Higginbottom, they call time. They're not going to get, the, it's not like the NBA. They still got to inbound from their side of the court. And so with four seconds to go, the Hillers up by two. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't call that timeout earlier. Yeah, just to get a decent playoff because you, you want a two-pointer here. You want right. this game, if you're the Wolverines, to go to overtime. You're not looking to launch any three-pointer here. And now... With four seconds, they're going to have some issues here to get off a clean shot. If right. you're the Hillers, Tom, you got to defend this, though, all over the court. Oh, yeah, I'm playing man-to-man -man here, no doubt. Well, they, both teams would shoot free throws. be surprising if a referee calls a foul here with four seconds to go. 99% of the time, they swallow the whistle here. I don't know if anything could surprise me right now. Yeah, right. This has been some great basketball game. Hiller's season on the line with four seconds to go. This is going in with the HCAM Classics. Well, I believe, not to toot my own horn, but this is going to be my final game, and I couldn't <laughs> believe that I got to witness such a great basketball game. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal basketball game. A Hiller team that trailed by 10 in the third quarter. Now is two points away with four seconds to go for a chance to go to the tournament. Their the inbound chance. It does get inbounds. Here's a three ball, and it is no good. And Hopkinton is going to go to the tournament with a big victory over the Westwood Wolverines. They had a look, did the Wolverines, to do it. But the ball just glanced, I believe, off the rim, Tom. And the Hillers end up winning 63-61 to 61 and will wait to see who their first round opponent is, which I'm sure will be on the road. What an unbelievable job by the Hillers to come in here, beat the best team in the TVL as of right now, and get that 10th win after an up-and-down season like this. Just so impressive by the Hopkinton Hillers, and they certainly earned every inch of it tonight. This game went down to the wire, and it was just a, a great battle between two very good teams. Well, hopefully you at, at home enjoyed it because, really, it was a lot of fun for us to do here. The Hillers, even their record at 10-10, and 10, and that means they will get a tournament berth. They will wait to see what happens and where they land. But as Tom pointed out, they beat one of the best teams in the state and one of the best teams in the TVL. And the must-win situation gives the Hillers the lead. And player of the game, Nick Canal, 25 points. Unbelievable. And very tough inside. Well, that's going to wrap up HCAM's coverage of Hopkinton High School boys basketball. For Tom Nappy, I'm Mike Prate, where once again the final score, the Westwood Wolverines lose to the Hillers by the score of 63 to 61 and Hopkinton is on their way to the tournament. Thanks for watching everybody.